Hey guys, welcome back to Coin Knowledge. So today I want to kind of look over a new gaming studios uh, platform that recently launched, which is Mora Games. Uh, I'm going to give you my honest opinion here. Uh, we're going to kind of look at their website, their Twitter, kind of news that's been going on throughout their Twitter. And we're just going to be taking a look at it. We'll look at their token that actually recently launched within the last several days, uh, almost a week now. Uh, we'll be taking a look at it. And again, I'll give you my honest opinion. If you guys are a fan of crypto gaming and these smaller projects that we bring to your attention consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel your support means a lot so if you look at more games what are they here uh so we'll see more games it again it is more of like a gaming studio let me reload the page uh they kind of change the backdrop there so empowering digital ownership so more games decentralized ecosystem places a premium on authentic digital ownership through blockchain technology again we've seen this a lot but if we look down here and there's gonna be one game on here that you know, might actually stand out, one that we've actually covered in the past, even though it was in different hands at that time. So again, what are they about? Empowering digital ownership, innovative and ex exploration, sustainable and long-term vision. So if we look at Moore's main website, again, they have their games, they have their Moreverse, so they're building like almost like their own augmented uh, metaverse. They have comics, which is kind of odd, but they have comics, eSport. So that's all great. You know, if that's something, if they can deliver on all that, that is great. It seems a little ambitious, but again, that's great. We look at all their teams or all their games they have going on here. So they're building. So what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, around seven uh, projects. Again, some of these are comics, uh, comics here. So we have one game. I kind of hate how they do the faded text background. All right, let's just do that. Uh, so if we look here, so they have a few projects that they're working on. You can notice here that they have Meadowlands. So Meadowlands, Battle for Citizen Finance. It was actually a project that had kind of been dropped. And it looks like more games had actually picked it up. So if we look at more games, one thing uh, I do want to acknowledge, there has been some recent, not FUD, but kind of questions that have came up about more games. As any new project would that kind of just emerges, uh, it's totally understandable. And again, it's more games have been some questions i've been getting in the comments recently so that's why we're covering it and just giving you my opinion on it so none of this is financial advice just giving you my opinion so we are not just a studio we are the future of entertainment okay yep we see that a lot so ownership reimagined web3 adoption community driven explore our diverse world so they're different games support for multiple platforms so explore the more games ecosystem so they do have, again, their native token, Mora, which is an Ethereum-based utility token. I'm not in love that it's on the Ethereum chain. Some people prefer it, but I am not a big fan of it. I think this next bull run, we'll be seeing a lot of, personally, I think Avalanche is going to be the chain where gaming really blows up, especially with all their subnet technology, and it's just way cheaper to get into and do transactions on Avalanche. But again, that's not a deal breaker. That's just my opinion there. Uh, why they chose Ethereum, I don't know. With a maximum supply of 500 million uh, more tokens, and they don't, I can't see that it says it anywhere, but I believe, if you go on their Telegram, I believe that their circulating supply is about half that, so about 250 million uh, more tokens. Again, I can't find that anywhere, mainly because if you go to their coin market cap page and try to look at their white paper or their GitHub, this is what you get, uh, which is a blank page, so that's a kind of worrying that that's the link that it goes to but you know it is what it is uh so that's that's kind of a worry for me uh, already uh, they do have some news uh some updates that have came out from i believe their main heads of the of their studio um web3 alexis so they have put out a couple again this is very new uh, we'll take a look at it and show you how new it is so another thing i kind of don't like is that yes they have their names here but you know, they have their, it's had their LinkedIn, so you can actually go on the LinkedIn and see the company's uh, team members. So, yeah, kind of a doxxed team, and Alexis actually does, is pretty active on his Twitter about the project, so if you follow them there. Now, this is something that has been getting a lot of questions, is that building the Web3, or future of Web3 entertainment. So, look at their partnerships. Now, on a face level, I love these partnerships. You know, if you've been watching the channel, you know that we've talked about a lot of these projects. You know, GameSwift. I love Game Swift. I loved Alt Altura, Miria, Polygon, uh, you know, even Chainlink. I think that these are solid partnerships, especially in the gaming world. I think it's great. It's odd that they didn't build on Polygon if they have that partnership, but hey, you know, either way. And it looks like they are based out of Dubai. But if you look here at their Twitter, again, they begin a lot of questions. Uh, you know, just like you know, people are questioning whether our listed partners 
from Warrior Games are official because there's no concrete evidence. Again, it's hard to find anything. They don't really have a white paper that's publicly accessible that I could find. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong there, if you were able to find it. And again, that's currently at the time of this recording. So Warrior Games was previously Arverse Studio. So it had gone through a rebrand, which... You know, that can be taken either way. That's up to your preference. And has successful partnerships with collaborations like companies like Myria, uh, Carve, GameSwift, Chainlink, Altura, Digital Arms, uh, AFK DAO, Polygon Gaming, also a member of B Game Alliance. So, yeah, uh, I mean, and again, yeah, there has been some, this part, yes, there has been some FUD about more games if their partnerships are fake or not. But. Again, if they had all that partnerships, I don't know why they rebranded from Arvars or if they were bought out. I don't know. I, I think if you actually go back through GameSwift, uh, their tw uh, Twitter far enough, you can actually see that one of their games actually did get uh, listed with GameSwift. So that partnerships I can believe in, uh, GameSwift's partnership. But And again, that, that's a solid partnership right there with GameSwift. So I was able to find that. I couldn't really find any ties to the other ones, but... I mean, GameSwift looks like that's a legit partnership that had happened in the past. But either way, uh, that's just answering this question there. They do have their Twitter here. So, again, it does say that their Twitter has been around since 2021, March of 2021. So it makes sense if the if the Arvar Studios was their username before they swapped to Mora Games. I just wish they were a little bit more open about that up front or that it was easier to find that information instead of digging through it. I don't like that they had to make a post about getting called out about it so much, but... Here you can see the Web3 Alexis. Again, so much FUD going on. Uh, the team's just staying silent uh, or staying building to their goals. So that's cool. Uh, again, you know, they have their mobile game with Karnak Legacy. And again, you just go on their Twitter here. They have a bunch of different information. Again, they do uh, actually bring up the point that Meta Lands Battle for Citizens Finance was, uh, let's see here. I want to say they, they acknowledge it that it was built from another uh, game studio, the one that's previous to more games and that they had picked it up, but uh, I can't find it here, but it is on here. I would recommend uh, going on their Twitter and taking a look at it if it's a project that you're interested in, but again, not financial advice, just bring it to your attention, but look at the games that they do have building right now. So they have Karnak Legacy, which is coming soon to the Google Play and Apple Store. Uh, I believe it's going to be, again, on mobile, so we can see Kind of their partnerships here again. So, yep, you can see mobile. I like the graphics. Uh, I don't like that they use the, if you remember, uh, it's kind of funny. I don't like that they that they use the ape or the gorilla here from, whatever it is, from, uh, uh, what is it, Citizen Conflict uh, or Battle for Citizen Finance. Uh, I'm already forgetting the name. Let's see if we can go back. But, again, that ape is from that project, Meadowlands. Meadowlands Battle for Battle. Battle for Citizen Finance, so it's interesting that they reuse him for all their projects. That's interesting, but again, I'm not saying that I get a bad feeling from this project. I just think it's so early, and you know, it, I wish there was a white paper out that was a lot easier to read. I wish they had a game that was at least playable or something like that. It's you know, the only redeeming thing is that yes, I could find that partnership if you go far back enough on GameSwift's Twitter about listing one of their games okay on their platform. Yes, uh, I, you know, you can see that Meadowlands Battle Battle for Sin of Finance was a game that was actually working, so it makes sense that you know somebody actually picked up that game, which I like. I like that project, but we see more partnerships: Unix Gaming's, Miria, Spintop, Chainlink, Polygon. So, okay, uh, you know, good partnerships to list there, if they're all there. Uh, Mythia Realm of War. They have another game that's building again you see here i think this is yep this is the one that got listed on game swift so i could find that that actually looked like it was pretty verified so that's good to see again coming to the google play store and app store so unleash the power of the gods again these projects are working currently not at least to my knowledge not playable and they're not fully released so again i kind of wish that there was something playable here at least uh in the slightest even just like a closed beta or alpha just something but you know, it, maybe it's asking for a lot. I don't know. but that. So those are the two games they have coming out. And so, again, they do have their more token, which recently just came out. So innovating the future of play, one token at a time. So become a token holder. We'll see. So it is a native token of Myria Games designed to power the future of entertainment. So if you believe here, uh, we can see that all the different futures and utility of the game. So, again, 
transaction currency within all their platform games, governance, influence, incentive mechanism, fast and cost effective. So, I mean, I guess if you're on Ethereum, but yeah, you know, whatever that, that can be debated. So NFT creation and ownership, air adventures, blockchain technology, maximum supply. That's another thing. You have to go in their Telegram and ask uh, about it, and they say that about half of the total supply is out right now and circulating, but I couldn't find anything on a vesting schedule. And again, this project's so early, they could release a, a white paper uh, here in the next couple of days. They could release one tomorrow, but who knows? Allocation and distribution. So if we look here, actually, they might have just added one. I don't believe they did, but if we see uh, Mora token, nope, they don't bring up the total or the circulating supply. Uh, they don't bring up the actual amount. They do kind of bring, there is a buy and sell tax on the project currently on their native token. They say that it will go down the more that they grow, which is an interesting uh, theory or an interesting thing. So no initial token sales, no lockup periods, no venture capitalist involvement. So it looks like maybe it was a fair launch, but it's not your typical uh, way of reading a white paper in my opinion so existing holder allocation 36 percent okay here we go the migration ratio one to one uh three months so it's kind of confusing a little bit but you know again this is just bringing it to your attention uh please if you're interested on this project please do your own research as you should with anything don't just go aping into anything just because you saw it on youtube do your own research but so what is a Mario token Again, native utility token, is it available for sale after its launch? No, more token does not involve sales, investments, or venture capital at at its launch. It's open for available for everyone to trade. So it can be used within their ecosystem. So pretty typical. If you look at their native token, right now it's trading at about one point one cent, one two or one one cent, one and a half cent at the current time. They did launch uh, literally a couple days ago at the end of November. So they have been trading kind of sideways. It is up, you know, 22% at the time of the launch. So it did almost touch two cents here. So it does have a market cap or fully diluted of about six and a half million. So if it is half of that, you can imagine it's uh, just over $3 million in circulating market cap. Again, it's on the Ethereum chain. So you can get it on Uniswap or OpenOcean, uh, get it on a DEX. So that's how you can get your hands on it. If you look at their DEX tools, we can see, even though I couldn't find this confirmed on the website anywhere, or again, ask about it on the Telegram, couldn't find anything, but on Dex Tools, it does say that their liquidity is locked for five months. So that is nice. Uh, that is nice to see. Again, uh, looks like their holders have actually been going up. I have been watching it. So it looks, looks like it's about one, about 1,900 holders at this time. They have a pretty decent 24-hour 20 volume uh, based on the size of the market cap, especially if you look at the circulating market cap of about over 3 million so that's not bad to see. They have a pretty good DEX uh, score as far as their contract goes. So I don't know. I mean, that's it's just something I would watch uh, for right now if you're interested. But I do think that more games has potential. Uh, I'd like to see more from the team. I'd like to see a white paper, more uh, information on the tokenomics. I'd like to see a game come out that's actually playable. Yes, we can see some gameplay on Meadowlands. But again, we know that project was already building from a previous studio. So I don't really want to give more all that credit. And I'm not trying to be harsh on more games. I'm just trying to give you my honest, unbiased opinion because it's crypto is risky enough as is. So I don't want to get on here and tell you that more games looks like the next 100x and then mislead a lot of people if it ends up not going that way. So again, just bringing more games to your attention. I think they'll do well uh, as long as the team sticks around and they actually do deliver on what they say. It is a, again, a gaming studios. We see gaming studios like Miria, you know, g uh Playable Games, all projects we've covered on this channel, we see them do extremely well. So if Mario Games can deliver, and again, they can start bringing out more information on their ecosystem, more stuff for us to see, then I think we can see uh, Mario Games kill it uh, personally. But please tread with caution. Again, it's a new token launch, new project launch. It's very high risk, extremely high risk. I can't stress that enough. Please do your own research, know what you're doing. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd recommend, if you're interested, 
Again, go through their Twitter, reach out to them on their Telegram, Discord. Uh, they do have a YouTube channel where they kind of maybe will post some updates. And just keep a lookout uh, if you're interested. I would, I'm would i going to watch more games, and as developments come on or go on over time, we'll cover it here on this channel. But let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of more games? Uh, are you about it? Not about it? Do you see any red flags or, I guess, any green flags that you like about more games? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you guys can like the video, comment, subscribe, the notification bell, and share the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, see you guys.